The analytical HPLC, we can use this for a lot of purposes. For example, to uh, develop a method, if you would like to separate some uh, constituent from your uh, <coughs> mixture, if you have a crude extract uh, from plant or from anything, natural resources generally, you can use it also to make the qualitative and <coughs> the quantitative analysis. Uh, when we talk about the qualitative uh, means to identify, to identify the compounds, the different compounds that you have in your mixture, for example, I have um, these, the hyperidine or the nobiltine, or and it uh, allows us also to uh, determine the right concentration. Uh, we call it the quantitative. To make a quantification, a means to identify how much amount I have from these constituent and how much amount I have from this one. Right, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the qualitative and the quantitative analysis. In fact, in order to do this task, it is compulsory to have some standards. Yeah, so you need to order some standards and to establish some calibration curves. And then you will refer your sample to these calibration curves. Uh, it depends how much uh, standards you need to order. Uh, in a lot of situations, we found we, we find this problem of the limited budget. We don't have uh, <coughs> the financial side, so it's um, uh, it's up to us to order this standard. And exact and in particular, sometimes uh, it's my that your standard is very very expensive only uh, to order five five milligram costs uh, about uh, 300 euro or 400 euro it's really really expensive and uh, you need to put in your mind that in order to obtain a reliable and accurate result there is no way you need to get to them because um, uh, when we talk about we can refer to some uh, reported studies before yeah but in this case w even if they use it the same column they use it the same column and uh, the same diameter the same length the particle size also of uh, uh, of the, the stationary phase the same phase a normal or an, uh, a reverse phase and everything is the same and the solvent system even even so you cannot get accurate results without having some standards sometimes uh, if you inject the standard today and uh, the next week you need to uh, use the same uh, even the reason that you you use the same calibration curves is not really reliable. You need to re-inject some standards and after you can inject your sample and make a qualitative and a quantitative analysis. So uh, because why I'm talking the conditions and a lot of parameters get changed. Uh, uh, I will not talk about the, the flow rate if we change it from 1 ml uh, per minute to 0 0.8 ml per minute or the pressure you increase it or you decrease it sometimes we keep all of these parameters we keep them all the same yes the, um, the, 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 the ratio of the solvents and everything we keep it the, 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 the nature of the column and, and after uh, it's my that these compound uh, the response of these compound uh, and these experiment uh, get out in a retention time of seven and during the next experiment or for the next day or the next week we get it uh, after 
nine or eight minutes so you, you see the difference of retention time you can't compare the retention time of another worker of another uh, researcher you need to build your own data you need to uh, get your own calibration curves and your own uh, of course uh, uh, standards to uh, make a right and an accurate result at the end